Before Magic Bands and My Disney Experience, Disney had a very different idea for the future of theme park technology. A stuffed Mickey Mouse that knew where you were and whispered tips in your ear. It was supposed to be groundbreaking, personalized, interactive, and of course magical. But instead, it flopped so badly that Disney pretty much pretends like it never existed. This is the story of Pal Mickey. I'm Mouselet One, and for today's Mouselet's Monday, we're talking about a piece of Disney lore that's been so far buried under the rug, not even my history-obsessed sister knew about it when I mentioned it earlier this week. But since my full-time job is working in tech as a director of product management, today I'm putting my tech hat back on to talk about this simultaneously very simple, but also very innovative failed project. So to start, who or what was Pal Mickey? At a basic level, he was an interactive talking Mickey Mouse plush that could act as a personalized tour guide to the parks, sharing tips, facts, and even jokes as guests navigated around. But before we dive too deeply into Pal Mickey himself, let's rewind a few years. In the 90s and early 2000s, Disney's surveys showed that guests were increasingly interested in tailored, immersive, and even personalized experiences. So Disney became deeply invested in bringing more interactive offerings to the market. Attractions like the online Virtual Magic Kingdom platform, Tomorrowland's Alien Encounter, and even the now infamous Disney Quest were all about merging entertainment with technology. And don't worry, a full deep dive on Disney Quest is in the works for a future Mouselets Monday. But even beyond those survey results, words like AI and robotics were buzzwords in the tech industry. Sony had just released their robot dog, which made headlines around the world and Disney wanted to keep up. So they began testing interactive AI-based toys that could sense, react, and ultimately guide guests. And it's because of those initiatives that Disney's research and development department created an animatronic genie backpack. Aladdin had released in 1992 and was an immediate smash hit, so the genie was very relevant and very popular at the time. And as a fourth wall breaking character, he was seen as the ideal personality for a tour guide. Interestingly, we sort of saw the same concept resurrected years later with Disney Genie and Disney Genie Plus, but I digress. So this backpack. The genie could move his eyes and talk, just like a normal animatronic. And the idea was that he would react and tell guest stories based on their location in the park. He was also meant to interact with guests, meaning that he would ask questions and then could later respond with personalized information, again, mostly based on where the guests were located in the park. But this early concept was seen as impractical for three main reasons. One, it was bulky, heavy, and awkward to bring on rides. Two, as a backpack, it meant that the actual guest wearing it couldn't see the genie. And and three, with the noise levels in the park, it was hard to hear. So they continued to experiment and decided to pivot to something that would whisper to the guest, making it easier for that guest to hear while not disturbing others around the park. During this iteration, they took another popular character, Simba, and turned him into a Beanie Baby type toy that could be worn on someone's wrist. It would then vibrate when it had something to share, signaling that the guests should put their wrist up to their ear in order to hear it. But again, having the toy up to your ear meant that you couldn't see its eyes or mouth move, and overall, it just felt a bit too cumbersome. And while Simba was selected for being so fuzzy and cuddly, he wasn't a character that universally worked throughout all of the parks. So they pivoted again, and that is what brought us to what we now know as Pal Mickey. A Mickey Mouse stuffed animal that would giggle and vibrate when it had something to say, and then talk to you through an embedded speaker. Although it should be noted, they dropped the idea of having this be any sort of animatronic, Pal Mickey was purely a stuffed animal. So how did Pal Mickey work? Well, when the Americans with Disabilities Act passed in 1990, Disney was required to implement a system that provided closed captioning throughout the parks for hearing impaired guests. And this system was extremely expensive to install, but also extremely high tech. So Disney wanted to find another way to utilize it. And they found that opportunity through Pal Mickey. So let's dive into that closed captioning system. It was made up of hundreds of infrared transmitters, which were placed all throughout the parks. Each of those infrared transmitters sends out infrared signals, which are then picked up by an infrared receiver. And in this case, the infrared receivers were the closed captioning devices in the early days and later Pal Mickey. You're likely very familiar with an infrared transmission system like this because it's how a TV and its remote function. The remote is the infrared transmitter and the TV is the infrared receiver, which uses the infrared signal sent from the remote to take a certain action. The only real difference between a TV remote system and Disney system is that Disney's system doesn't require someone to press a button like you have to on a remote. 
Disney sensors are constantly transmitting so that they can be picked up by anyone at any time. So this high-tech infrared system conveniently already existed in the parks when this project was underway, meaning that in order to tap into it, all pal Mickey needed was an infrared sensor hidden within him, which was achieved by placing it into his nose. So what was included in these infrared transmissions and how did pal Mickey use them? Primarily, each transmitter let the receiver know what attraction or key landmark was nearby. This was used for the core pal Mickey functionality. As you navigated the park, passing attractions or waiting in lines, he could tell you tips or jokes or fun facts about that particular spot. Here's a look at it in action. Do me a favor, pal. Take my ears and get them against my head. <laughs> now that's how we're going to look at the face, huh? Because it's so fast. Look, I'm talking about you get back before you leave fast. And that's fast, you know. I forgot. You need to be 44 inches tall to blast off from your face mouth. <laughs> Guess that leaves me out, huh? Looks like the Mad Hatter's thrown some tea party. Must be his hot birthday. <laughs> Oh boy, Goofy's board former. You know, me and Goofy have been pals since 1932. But back then, we called him Sippy Dog. Now that's the Goofy name. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh boy, Minnie's house. Hey, smells like she's got something bacon in the oven. Let's go see. Wanna? Everything that Pal Mickey actually said was pre-scripted and stored on a memory device within the plush. And each phrase was then triggered by the particular code received from that particular infrared transmitter. But Pal Mickey was able to give some more advanced tips as well. Some of the infrared transmitters provided information about what was happening nearby, like an upcoming parade or notably short line. And others had time-based information, like when a show would be starting. And so Pal Mickey was able to use this information in order to act like a semi-tour guide through the parks, providing his guests with knowledge about when parades and shows and character meet and greets would be happening. Now, of course, without the infrared sensors, Pal Mickey was basically useless, meaning he wasn't particularly fun for guests to use at home. So they added in a few features that you could use anywhere and were triggered by buttons in his hands and belly, such as simple games like Simon Says and Trivia, or particular generic jokes and fun facts. <laughs> That's sort of tickled. Okay, so which game do you want to play? If you want to play, that isn't here. Squeeze my left hand. To play, Mickey says, squeeze my tummy. And to play, fast friends, squeeze my right hand. Pal Mickey was really innovative, and he was released in April 2003. He cost $50 to purchase, or you could rent him for $8 a day. But things didn't go so well. The rental program ended December 1st, 2004, and while Pal Mickey did stick around for a few years, he was ultimately discontinued in 2008. And during that time, he just never gained widespread adoption. He never had long-term support or any meaningful updates. And all in all, he was and still is largely considered a pretty catastrophic failure. But why? Well, despite all the tech innovation and the unique concept, Pal Mickey struggled with a few core issues. The main one was that he provided a fairly limited interaction. Everything was pre-scripted, meaning that they did not change and quickly became very repetitive. He only had a couple of things to say about each attraction, so once you had heard it once or twice, it kind of got old. Number two, there were infrared limitations. Infrared signals only work with line of sight, meaning you have to have a clear, unobstructed path between the infrared transmitter and the infrared receiver. This meant that if something blocked the signal, such as a cast member, a ride vehicle, or even another guest, Pal Mickey would not trigger. And that led to a lot of perceived technical difficulties. Number three was battery and durability issues. Pal Mickey was a toy in the early 2000s that required batteries. And since he was always sensing, those batteries ran out fairly quickly. He also just was generally prone to wear and tear being dragged around a theme park, particularly when he was offered as a rental product. And in general, people just thought it was kind of gross to be renting a stuffed animal that had been used by hundreds of other people. And lastly, the practicality aspect. Simply not everyone wanted to have to carry around a fairly large Mickey plush all day. And by the time 2008 rolled around, when Pal Mickey was officially discontinued, the Disney parks were struggling. Fast passes were still paper and required guests to run around the parks. Dining reservations were made over the phone with no confirmation receipt. Wait times were long and guest satisfaction scores were low. And the old, unchanging Pal Mickey was not going to be the answer to these problems. Disney knew that they needed something much bigger, something that tapped into newly developed smartphone technology. 
something that was truly personalized, something that could constantly change and evolve. And so they abandoned Pound Mickey and the stuffed animal concept altogether, and instead pivoted to what later became Magic Bands, the My Disney Experience app, and their proprietary X-Connect system. If you want to learn more, we have a full deep dive on that project, which covers its full creation and how Disney still uses it today to track all guests, including you, as they navigate the parks. But at that time, it meant that Disney said goodbye to our friend Pal Mickey. But while he was removed from the shelves, the infrared transmitters remained and many still remain today. Which means that in the last couple of years, people have brought their Pal Mickeys into the parks and he does still sort of work. Although remember, the script was stored within Pal Mickey himself and could not be changed changed. So while the parks have been updated, the things that Pal Mickey has to say have not been. Hey pal, here's one for you. Why do frogs in Camp Mini Mickey keep their money? Why in river banks? <laughs> What's that you say? Frogs don't have money? Why sure they do. They have green backs. <laughs> what the hell is Camp Mini Mickey? So of all of the technology that Disney has actually released, Pal Mickey is probably the biggest failure. Although there are tons of fascinating failed concepts and prototypes that never saw the light of day and definitely deserve a deep dive of their own. But while Pal Mickey himself did not succeed, he did pave a very important path and plant the seed in executives' minds of a personalized tour guide experience, something that they've been chasing for the last 20 years. There is so much more at Disney Tech to cover, so stay tuned for future Mouselets Monday episodes. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.